29. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding show every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also, a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. Go into newsletters. You'll see it right on the right-hand side. You get Mastering Probability for one month for $149. Six months is $6.95, which is a savings of $199, or 22%. And one full year for $11.95, which is a savings of $593, or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks, okay? So you can pick whatever one you like. If it works for you, awesome. For some reason, it doesn't work for you. Bottom line, just cancel the 29th day. You get your money back. And on top of that, Steve has a huge amount of different indicators that he used. You study those the next 30 days, and guess what? You got a nice little bundle, <laughs> no doubt. Steve Rose, what's happening? Well, you know, our Rays and Marlins didn't do too well no. in the playoff series. So we've we got to fall back to our Buccaneers and the, and the uh, Dolphins, which are still, they're still doing well. I don't think Tampa didn't play this weekend, right? No, and then, but yeah, then, we, then preseason, we get the lightning starting, so. Yeah, yeah, starts so tomorrow, right? I think you guys are kicking it off, right? Yeah, so yeah. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful, it's a great time of the year. You got that going, plus the uh, uh, college football. Uh, for me, it doesn't get more beautiful than that. No, I listen, I'm with you, man. That, that, yeah. that college football, man, the scores they run up, are, like, amazing. <laughs> and, and great athletes, just great, you know, really yes. great athletes all around today yes. in college. Uh, you know, if you take a look at the golfers that are out there, um, you know, it's just extraordinary talent. Uh, it just gets younger and younger and younger. It so does. It doesn't, does. doesn't do well for me, but uh, that's okay. We'll just keep moving forward on those tee boxes. That's right. So, yeah, so, you know, we had obviously a war, uh, you know, in the Middle East break out again. And uh, so I thought, well, why don't, uh, what, what can I best do with our segment today? And I said, you know, let's go see how the S&P 500, how gold and oil traded during other prior uh, wars that are out there. Because as I said, this is a Middle East war again with regard to Israel and, and, the, and the Arab nations out there. So in 2006, that was the last war that I was able to pick up on. And it was kind of, it's referred to as the Israel-Hezbollah war. Okay. And it began on July 12th, ended on August 14th. So it was 34 days worth of war. So this is a chart for the ES mini. The reason why I'm using the ES charts instead of the um, S&P 500 charts is here I can capture more so what went on, how the market actually reacted out here, and yes. because of all the different patterns that I use out here. So I've identified, Tom, the day that that war began, July 12th, and we can see that it certainly was a down day and price closed below the bottom of a profile. And then the very next day it closed below this little red line. That's the oscillator and change line. That tells us that market conditions were bearish. And you would have said, hey, that's pretty simple. We're going to go back and test that prior swing point, which is in fact what happened. So we had the market move lower for basically four days and then it moved on up out of there. Um, and I've got listed here the uh, August 14th day when the market um, had reopened again. So it really wasn't a, uh, in fact, if anything, I would say in this case here, if we didn't know that there was a war or anything that went on and we just simply paid attention to the pattern, such as a test and rejection of a prior swing point, or here we get a TD9 count uh, top and price pulls back. Um, you know, so the patterns really what stuck out at me. So, uh, how did the how did gold trade during that same same time period? So here we can see I've identified the uh, where gold was at on uh, July 12th. We saw just like we saw kind of a two or three bar move to the downside inside of the S&P. We had a basically a two to three bar move to the upside, and then just simply uh, gold moved lower out here. We can see the August 14th. Um, end of the war out there, uh, so to speak. And really there wasn't overall, there really wasn't much movement in between that uh, time period, in between that 34 days out there. Now, you know, when I was out of town this weekend and uh, we didn't turn on the uh, television until kind of late on uh, Saturday. And that's when I, you know, got the news of what was going on. And, you know, we were traveling yesterday as well, so didn't get back till late. But certainly, you know, when, when gold was up, that wasn't a surprise. But of course, I was thinking, hey, it's a war. This thing is probably just simply going to start a gigantic run. If we take a look at how lights we crude traded during that same time period here, we've got identified the first arrow is helping us to identify where price was traded and how it responded on July the 12th. Again, it was about a two day reaction to the upside. This set up, Tom, a, a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And then it was just history with regard to light speed crude all the way uh, down into a, a low back in the 2007 uh, timeframe. So this was in 2006 where we take a look at this Hezbollah war. So 
if we take a look at the next war that I was able to identify is 1982. They refer to it as the Lebanon War. And that uh, began on June 8th, and it ended sometime in September of 1982. Don't have a specific date. They really are saying, uh, if you take a look at the history, it's saying that was really the main phase that was complete by that time period. So here we can see, in this case here, Israel uh, uh, invaded Lebanon, and they did that on June 6th of 1982. What happened was it formed uh, a teeny, it's hard to read, but it was a nice TD nine count bottom that formed. We had a few day rally out here. We can see that there was another TD nine count top that formed out here, moved all the way down until we got to this Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. Some of the tools that you had mentioned that subscribers get access to that I that I teach folks. So this is really more about, the, so do we have a move lower? Sure. When the so-called uh, phase was over, we rallied, we actually were higher when we take a look at the S&P 500. So for me, when I take a look at this, this tells me pay attention to the patterns more so than the, um, more so than, you know, the news uh, that's going on out there. Now, I, I didn't have access, Tom, to, uh, to uh, gold or oil charts uh, going back that far. So I just stuck with the S&P 500, or the ES, well, in this case here, the S&P 500. And this was the 1973 Yom Kippur War. So this started on, this lasted for um, six, seven days, maybe 10 days, something like that. But here we can see where the war started. Price was still moving higher. It was above a green oscillator and change line. It tells us about a bullish market condition out there. So not a substantial impact to the S&P 500 with regard to that war. Here's the six-day war, the 1967 six-day war, June 5th through June the 10th out here. On the uh, day that that war began, that was a TD9 count bottom. Price just simply moved higher. So it didn't matter about the war. It was really about the patterns inside the markets that were out here. So where are we now? Where are we now in the markets? Well, if we take a look at last week inside the ES Mini specifically, it formed both a daily by the D point pattern and a weekly by the D point pattern. Both of those also referred to as Gartley buy signals. So in this case here, we've got a buy. In fact, if an ES close today above 4370 and 4370 to 4416 is the sell zone this is a bearish structure daily profile but it closed about 4370 on the daily chart today suggests that price makes move to 4416 the weekly chart the one on the right hand side suggests that price makes its way up to 4424 so the target range to the upside 44.16 to 44.24. That's assuming price closes above 43.70. And lo and behold, if we take a look at the last 25 years out here, the ES Mini, from a seasonal standpoint, bottoms right here, right now. That red line, that is today. Yes. Here. So that's the 25-year cycle. Now, on the other side of it is, if the ES Mini closes below 42.35.50, that's the low of that weekly hammer candle, that then says, and we took a look at this last week, that the pre-election cycle pattern kicks in and that markets move lower into the end of the year. As to gold and silver out here, gold, silver, they all had in the GDX, GDXJ, they all had TD9 count bottoms. They already had those patterns in play out here. Gold right now trading above the top of its profile. That suggests a further rally. And I would say the further rally could take us up to the 1925 to 1948 level tone. You gotta love these markets, Steve, right? I mean, it, it's just—it's just amazing because the pat the patents rule, folks. That's the bottom line. Okay? They really do. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I, look, when I, when I went to start putting these charts together, I expected to see something totally different. Yeah. No. But listen, I know. I know. Right? Crazy. But, Have a great one. Have a safe one, Steve. Thanks. Tom. Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has.